Hello again and welcome back to another video. So as you can see, uh, we're inside. I'm gradually making space in the lounge, but uh, I'm a little perturbed. Uh, today we're doing the wiring. Let me uh, tell you why I've got a bit of trepidation. All right then, so this is all the wiring to get into the car. Um, so I was expecting um, most of this wiring loom from AK. Um, I usually put these two chunks of uh, relays together. Um, and of course we've got the fuse box as well. Um, but uh, it's quite different from Canem's with their new, new unit. They now have a huge uh, fuse box here as well. It used to just be a couple of fuses just hanging on the, on the side of the relays. Uh, their uh, OBD uh, unit here needs mounting as well. And these connectors are quite chunky. So usually we uh, suspend uh, underneath um, from the ceiling of the passenger uh, bay. However, I was advised by my IVA guy, uh, even with the previous Canem's unit, which is much slimmer with the cable coming out of the back, that perhaps it'd be a good idea to put a sheet of plastic or something over, just in case there was an accident and the passenger shot forward so they wouldn't lose their kneecaps. Well, this is obviously a lot deeper. Um, so a lot more to hide and I'm not really sure if suspending it is now an option. So, so we've got that to mount, this to hide somewhere, so it's still accessible, I guess, although you hope it never get, kind of goes wrong. Um, should you ever want to put in a, uh, a unit to read any error codes, I guess that has to be accessible. Actually, not that one. That is uh, That goes into the um, accelerator. Uh, it's actually this one with the, with the mounts on it. <clears throat> and then we got all this gear. Now, I did something quite nice before and cut through into the uh, engine bay and mounted this fuse box so it poked out in the engine bay. Really nice actually to do that. Um, quite tricky, uh, but at least you could see all the fuses just by lifting up the bonnet and you didn't have to fumble about underneath the dash and see if anything had blown, etc, etc. Especially with everything else in its way. However, with the stainless steel cladding, I'm not sure if I'm gonna risk cutting a hole in there, even though that would look really nice again. Um, so if I don't put that up out of the way, poking into the engine bay, that also needs to be mounted somewhere and accessible. And I think I'm gonna struggle. So I'm gonna take it all out to the car and sort of lay it out on top and just see what the score is. All right then, so sorry for the uh, wobbly cam. Uh, this is a bit of an eye opener. So to suspend this underneath here um, is definitely, I think, gonna fail the IVA um, unless you made like a false top and put that over the top, uh, you know, underneath the, uh, th this, this, this unit to kind of smooth it out, if you like, or show, you know, cover, cover all of this gear. Um, maybe that's the answer. I mean, you're reducing, you're reducing the height here by, you know, three, oh, on, well, four, four, four and a bit inches. And um, if I can just go back a little bit, I think uh, it certainly looks worse in real life. Um, I don't think, I don't think that's happening. So, well, what am I, what am I thinking? Uh, not a lot, really. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you can sink this into here. Now, obviously we can't fix against the, uh, the the skin of the body there. So am I thinking that I'm gonna be making up some sort of bracket between uh, the back and, uh, and, and, and here, and then mounting this against the side, um, possibly, uh, possibly in this orientation. So the what, just the cables go over the top, which is uh, pretty acceptable. So I need to check all that and the distances and where we've got to go with the rest of the loom. Um, so I will be going through uh, the hole here, hopefully. I won't need their grommet, so I'll have to cut that off as I have my own grommet from trigger handbrakes. Um, but uh, I'm not too concerned. I know as long as we get, um, you know, at, at least, I think if I have at least from about here poking out of the hole, 
then the rest of the loom can plug into the engine. Um, possibly even, even, even a little bit less, I think is kind of okay. So I think that's my next step. I think I've got to poke this all through the hole and, uh, and then see what kind of length we've got here and just see what other positioning options we have. Um, I'm not really sure what else to do. Uh, just looking at it now, if we had a strong enough bracket, um, L-shaped up along here, it could be mounted higher up here, I suppose. Would that work? So that would be right up, right up underneath. Obviously well hidden then by the dash. Um, could, could, could something strong enough be fashioned there that isn't going to bump about? Whereabouts does the uh, the dashboard um, kind of glove box poke out? How much how much room have we got there? Maybe there isn't enough room there with the uh, dashboard glove box. Anyway, let's poke this lot through and let's see what we've got left. All right, so this is about as real as it gets. So it's just all uh, all quite new to me. Um, I'm presuming that everything before this uh, grommet has got to be on the inside of the car. Uh, so this is what we've got so far with a pretty good length of um, cable there. And then um, this is what we've got. Uh, let me just move that. <laughs> so this is what we've got on this side. Uh, it's a lot different to the previous loom in that it's really quite quite rigid they've obviously measured everything to fall in line uh, so what I've done first of all is just lined up uh, these connectors here because they all go in order as the uh, and they're marked up as uh, you know, near side and, and off side so they kind of denote where the cables got to lie I presume this has got to come down around the back here um, not quite sure where that one goes yet pretty new to me that connector uh, obviously I'm gonna put my nice grommet on here so that comes out out, out of the middle um, this O2 will go on to what comes out of the header uh, this is a knock sensor somewhere around the bottom I guess um, uh, not sure somewhere hopefully along along the bottom got a couple of others I recognize these uh, this this goes uh, this goes underneath that flywheel where we took the extension out, I think, or at least the small one does. This little dude here uh, actually goes up inside this air intake um, in, 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 into a little uh, sensor. And the sensor we have to file down to fit in there, then probably tiger seal it in. Um, more knock sensors and, and stuff. I'm not too concerned um, about the sensors. We'll obviously find a home for them. Um, the cables seem to fit down here pretty well. I'll tidy up where these are going and bring them out underneath. Just take this hose out briefly and uh, plug, plug them in. So the ones I'm a bit concerned about, uh, it says here, uh, gearbox. Now I had a little look in the instructions uh, before I even attempted this, and I think they are pre-wired to, to, for, the, um, for the gearbox uh, sensor, speed sensor, and also um, the reverse which I'm kind of a bit miffed about because, you know, we've just, we just laid those cables uh, <laughs> uh, da down there, you know, brought, bought the plug specially, laid the cables uh, all, all up, um, you know, behind the dash. So I'm going to have to look at that, you know, maybe we just snip these off and join them up or, or do something. Uh, and, and the reverse one isn't even that shape, it's, it's a round one. So maybe it's the one, uh, maybe it's one that we don't need to use one of these uh, for checking if it's in reverse or something. So, so the, the round one that's already in the gearbox is for the reverse, to make the reverse light come on. Anyway, I'll go and look at the instructions. And then, you know, obviously we've got uh, a knock sensor here. Now these two, uh, initially I thought they might be earth. Great, okay, I don't know what they're doing down here, but because they say fuse one and fuse two, I'm thinking they might have to go to the starter. Anyway, there's a load of instructions and uh, Canem's is fantastic support. So I'll check out the instructions and see where they are meant to be going. But that is, that's also very new to me. 
Uh, so I'm just hoping that they are all basically engine side and that this is it and this is the kind of position. Um, yeah, not that pretty, but actually probably looks a little bit more hidden than the previous loom, which kind of split off in a couple of directions right up here. So I see what they're trying to do. Um, so we'll obviously just massively P-clip or do something down here to keep it all in place or away from the engine. I'm not really sure. Anyway, uh, I think first of all, we need to find a home for that ECU. Okay, so new day. Uh, spoken to Canems, fantastic support as always. Always have been the last uh, few years of my previous Cobras. Uh, just chat to him. Um, I'm probably going to be contacting him again uh, to ask some questions. But just basically, uh, yeah, the loom is fairly tightly bound. Um, it is heat rated, so it can sort of go against the engine. But he says, uh, you know, it'd be good to mount some P-clips. And so I'm going to mount a P-clip here just to, just to uh, bring this away uh, and... Um, you know, give it some airflow. Um, so this is generally the, the mounting position. Uh, got some large earths here, which is uh, great. So they're going to a, a clean earth spot on the back. Uh, there's some great uh, M10 holes on the back. So they'll go to that. He did suggest that uh, the uh, Lambda sensor uh, connection might be a touch short, um, easy to extend. Um, but I think from my previous experience, I think the cables are long enough. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, there's a few new things. Uh, he does suggest that um, to use his alternator cable. Um, he's never had a problem with AK. He's had problems with Duff alternator wiring from other kit car manufacturers. Never with AK, obviously their wiring is great, but he says use his. So this, uh, this wire here um, is, is not going to be used and uh, we'll take that off a better in a minute. So, uh, so it's, it's all generally okay. Um, and I will go through the connections later on this video and give a more rapid rundown. Um, these two need to go on the starter, on the large terminal on the starter. So that's good to know. Uh, now there's a couple of wires, wasn't there? Uh, so he says to use these. Uh, they, they, these are marked up um, gearbox. Now one of them is for receiving the signal from the gearbox for uh, you know the revolutions, the pulses. Uh, so we've already put a wire in for that, but he says you need to keep that, uh, keep keep the wiring that I've done already because that goes to the speedo. You need to put in the input the code in there so the speedo reads correctly, uh, and to tee in to uh, that that cable um, with with his cable because that goes to the ECU uh, for better starting, monitoring the speed, uh, something else. So, so we've got to do that. So it's good that we have already laid that cable. We've just got to tee into it. And also there's the kind of synchro uh, connection, which we have not used before and always tied that up out of the way. Uh, on the gearbox, there's already a little tail that we just tie up out of, out of the way. But he says, plug in his cable. I think it's this one, um, I have to check because that will help you get into reverse more easily. Now, normally to get into reverse, because there's no synchro mesh, uh, you would chuck it into first or second, you know, whatever gear, forward gear, and then it will snick into reverse gear uh, more, more easily. Um, but with this, it's, it's a dream. It actually goes into reverse more easily uh, than, than, than it will do with first. So it does something with... Uh, something in, in the gearbox uh i can't remember the name of it now but anyway plug that in so that means getting under the car putting these two looms down there or i'm going to i'm going to tee the speedo one pr off probably a little bit higher um and uh or, or plug this one actually into this into the speedo and tee my one off of it just to get the pulses um yeah, anyway, we'll get to that. So it's all good, all good, all good. 
I think we've got a home for all, all of the wires. Pretty happy with that. Uh, this large wire, I thought I'd recognised it actually. It's actually go, to go into the originally installed uh, oil pressure, which we've taken out to install all, all of this lot. So that is probably my only kind of lasting question. Do we put the original oil pressure back in there, which is a much neater little plug and put this in? Or do we go and, or do we in, in have to install all of this and not use that? So that's, uh, that's, that's my only what if at the moment. All right, so that's just briefly about the wiring. So now we've got the correct sort of length. This is, you know, where it's all kind of falling. You're driven by the length of these to the, uh, uh, what are these called? Man, sorry, cannot remember. But uh, you're obviously driven by the length of these. This is not gonna get, pull back any further or really go forward any further. So this is kind of it. So we're gonna mount this neatly, have this coming out neatly. But that's the length. So uh, in this first part of the video, we are going to see uh, where we're mounting this. And yeah, it's definitely not happening on, on the ceiling. Now in a, in a garden of Douglas, I believe there's something uh, he's, he mentioned uh, above the transmission tunnel or a gap or a space where they put it in there. But for us, we're going to see if uh, we've got the length to get over to that void over there, because that's almost the only option Failing that, I think it'd have to go on the flat face at the end, uh, perhaps. So that's not too bad an option. We'll pick up an awful lot of heat there. So, uh, so let's have a look. Let's see where it can go. Okay, so we're a bit closer with our ideas here. Uh, so the cable comes out and goes neatly across here. It's a shame that this void here isn't just a little bit uh, deeper because everything could have been tucked down there and it could have reappeared. Um, you know it that in here um but as it is everything's just too chunky to be able to do that so i think i'm going to go across here um maybe with a couple of uh fashionable p-clips uh, to hold this to hold this in place um it's a bit of a shame because this length of this bar is actually excellent to put all the relays up against and it, and it works really well um but as it is, I might have to do a short bit of uh, alley and then mount them a little bit lower um, or break them up into, into, into two blocks or something. So I think this is, this is the way forward. And then all the cables, uh, quite a lot of length actually, um, will be into this void. And then I'm going to have to mount, um, mount everything uh, in between. So there's only a, there's a metal bar here, obviously, um, but this is just uh, G GRP, the fiberglass. Uh, so I'm gonna have to mount, uh, mount it carefully a couple of times sh through there. Uh, shouldn't be a problem. And, um, and suspend, you know, the ECU in this void deep enough uh, to take into account the depths of the cables and, uh, and try and hook everything else up there. I did contemplate um, bringing this fat cable in a bit lower and coming in here, but I guess then I'm gonna have to think of how I'm suspending it against the ceiling, remembering I've got stainless steel on the other side of this and don't really wanna buzz a hole through it unless I have to. Um, so so I, think, I think we're doing this. <laughs> and I might just get the other loom just to check some uh, sizes of, uh, of how long the relay is and and the fuse box etc uh, initially i did want to put the fuse box up through through here into the into the engine bay definitely worth doing if you've only got fiberglass without the uh, st stainless steel cladding it's really easy to cut through and it's awesome fuses are dead easy to get to rather than trying to fumble with your head underneath the dash wherever you mount the uh, the fuse box it's really good uh, to push it through there uh, and i think it looks looks awesome but I don't think I can risk that with stainless steel. It's just a, a nightmare getting the, the larger tools in there uh, to cut a straight line and, and fit it in there. Um, so we're gonna have to put the fuse box on the, uh, on the main AK loom this side. So, um, so I'm gonna zip it all into place and see what I've got metal work wise. I've got some 
I've got some nice trays and, and things um, that uh, I might be able to use if they span the distance or, or do something. Hopefully make a, a pretty decent job of it. I'll check back with uh, you in a sec. Wow, so I was just making up my template and I had a sudden thought. So I took out the windscreen and what do you know, the cables can pass over this and uh, and fall down, fall down the back straight into the void. Fantastic, which leaves my comp bar completely clear for uh, all the other uh, switches, um, fuse boxes, etc. Um, fantastic. So I'm not cutting down here anymore, trying to get into this void straight out the back. So just enough room to get that big fat cable up around here. And this large space here is big enough for all of the uh, all of the big catches and relays. That's the word I was after. So fantastic. So I'm going to finish up my um, my bracket now and uh, hopefully that will all fit all right and uh, let's get moving. Okay, so here's the uh, bracket I've uh, constructed and I use that word uh, very loosely. Uh, obviously it fits uh, between uh, the front bulkhead and the scuttle. Um, I need to pass the main cables through here um, before I attach it to the scuttle so they'll just be hanging out. And then I figured, you know, at some point you know, this could go wrong or something. So it needs to be maybe, maybe removable, you know, with a bit of faff probably. So by disconnecting the wires, I've made these kind of uh, keyhole uh, kind of holes, just so that, you know, there is a, a little chance that it could be, uh, it could be removed. So, um, you know, it's gonna take some, some doing to put it back together again, uh, but uh, at least there is a, there is a chance of uh, it, it, um, it, it, it being taken out I guess so um, so that's it uh, I've kind of used a, a rubber uh, grommets here and it's on foam so there might be some kind of vibration dampening but of course it is all solid state anyway so uh, I dare say that's that's fine anyway um, so yeah I'm uh, I'm pretty pleased with it uh, um, obviously I've had to make sure that I've got the depth here I think it ends up being about a total of about eight and a half centimeters from the uh, the back here to the top of the plugs so that is well in and I guess the trimmers uh, are going to have to um, make some kind of removable um, flap door something you know perhaps on magnets so that you can put a finger through a finger through a hole pull it open and uh, and see it because sometimes you might need to see the diagnostic light or plug it into a laptop so um it's certainly got to be accessible but i'm sure intertrim will have lots of ideas for that so that's basically it so what i'm going to do now i'm going to um i think i'm just going to cut these bolts nice and short and i'm going to put nylocks on so nothing moves and it can uh it'll it'll hold its position and um you know, it jams in there quite nicely because I put foam on the back as well. Uh, so it does jam in pretty nicely. And uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and mount this and then we'll be able to slide this in, lock the clips in and move on. OK, so a little update on the progress here. Um, so I plan to put these um, these fuses and relays somewhere up on this top rail. Not too sure how it's going to impact my relays from the uh, AK loom. But let me, let me show you the bracket here. So uh, so we've got the bracket all looking pretty good. Um, and the uh, is it ODBD port or something. Uh, that's all nice and secure and tight. So I've got the cables coming in through uh, those strip grommets. So no wearing can happen there. Uh, nicely secured. Obviously the ECU is removable by uh, disconnecting and sliding upwards. So that's uh, pretty cool. So uh, pretty happy with my solution in the end. Um, something else to think about, my uh, cable for the accelerator is not long enough to uh, get into that connector, so that's just a little extension job, um, but yeah, so let's uh, crack on and see uh, how the other relays are going to fit in here. All right then, so I think that's going to be about it. I'm going to show you what I've done, uh, but I think we'll leave the connections in the AK loom, which is basically the connections to another video. So this is all about the installation. Uh, so what I've done, uh, believe me, I've been working since uh, 
since uh, eight thirty this morning, and it's now uh, half past five. Um, you might wonder why, but uh, I found it quite tricky working with my head down here. Uh, let's have a look then. So um, I've got the uh, the uh, relays uh, from the AK loom neatly up across here. I found a bit of a uh, fibre board. I was going to use a bit of alley, but uh, you know, wh whatever, whatever works, right? Um, so I've mounted the fuse box there, uh, nice and fairly easy to get to. Uh, I don't think it's really going to work by sticking your head under the dash, but the dash, uh, the dash does lever away really quite quite a lot if once you've uh, undone uh, just a couple of these it really does swing out quite a long way so that might aid uh, a situation should you need to get some fuses but you know obviously we hope you don't have to uh, so that's it um, I've got the Canems loom um, here main loom coming out here um, uh, going through the center of the uh, gasket there and uh, going around the back and the uh that loom um obviously goes down to the two plugs to uh to my bracket here with the uh jobby on uh, the ecu and the uh odb connection so all good that canams unit is removable and the fuse box for it and the relays for it are up there i just could not fathom a way to put them somewhere without knees hitting without uh, interrupting the trim perhaps so i'm hoping that the trimmers can put a bit of trim straight down there and uh and you know magnet it or something so that square can be pulled away so that is the canems loom there's a couple of uh legs coming off of it uh one goes to um the uh accelerator and this one uh, I've no idea what to do with yet but you know that will be able to pass up behind as well and go to wherever it's meant to go and as for the uh, AK so yeah AK uh, loom is in so I've pushed the uh, uh, near side leg down through the required gap so that's all good this is all good um, there's a connection here that's meant to join onto the main loom because this this bank is actually on a separate little little a length of wire and you're meant to connect this to the main AK loom but the connection's way down there but that's fine because I had to do a little uh, 10 inch extension before I think it's uh, going to be a good um, 50 centimeters uh, uh, on uh, this time because it's it's quite a long length anyway so that's it so this is all roughly in place uh, this, uh, these are the dash uh, board uh, connectors, so they're hanging exactly where they're meant to hang, and hopefully, hopefully, everything else is uh, is a okay. So the loom will be passed over the steering column, and the legs will go forward, backwards, and uh, wherever the heck they need to go, starter motor and everything else. So I'm hoping that's all cool. Uh, engine bay is looking a lot better. I haven't plugged anything else in since uh, I last spoke to you and showed you it. Uh, I think everything's going to be pretty good. I've got my uh, uh, trigger handbrakes uh, grommet in there. So that's really nice holding that dead in the center. So no chafing. And apart from that, um, I just tidied up my fuel line here. Got the correct size end, trimmed the hose down. That's all nice and neat. I've temporarily put in the... Um, vacuum hose for the servo so it comes out out of the back of the uh, engine here and rests on top of my heater box comes around gonna have to put one p-clip in here perhaps and obviously it just goes into the servo uh in there somewhere so um so that's it um other minor things uh this o2 which goes to the lambda sensor is is fine but on the other side it's actually a little bit short and this was men mentioned by Canems so I'm gonna to have to extend that so in the next video uh, we'll look at some connections right then so that's it for this video um, apologies for all the moaning but uh, it's been quite a frustrating journey I uh, hope you got some ideas about where to mount uh, some of the gear and where to pass some of the cables um, or what not to do 
But anyway, in the next video, I'm going to be going through all of the connections, hopefully, and uh, fitting up the AK loom, etc. So uh, I'll see you again.